Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a tangerine spiral. Decide where you want the center of your spiral to be, give it a little pinch, and for this spiral I'm using the microwave splatter guard that I got off of Amazon, and I do have a link for it down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie-dye, so check that out. And then click your hemostat down on the first click, it doesn't need to be overly tight, you don't want to tear a hole in the center of your shirt, and then just twist it up a little bit. And then with your opposite hand, create pleats and spiral your shirt up. Unclick the hemostat and hold down the center of your spiral while you wiggle it out. And then you want to secure your spiral by using rubber bands or kite string, whichever you prefer. I like to use rubber bands because they're quick and easy and also they're reusable. So just give them a rinse and then dry them off and reuse them. I like a little bit of a tighter spiral, so what I'm doing now is I'm pulling on the loose tails and I'm tucking them into the nearest rubber band. Now you want to build yourself some type of an ice barrier and for this project I'm using the silicone cake molds that I got from Amazon and as I mentioned there is a link for them down below in the description box. And then when I'm all done with this project I just rinse them off in the sink and then I throw them in the dishwasher. It, they're very handy. Using a washable marker, mark out your pattern. This is not a necessary step but it's something that I like to do. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the die. And for this particular project, I'm going to be putting it on only two pieces of the pie. I just want to say thank you to everybody that continues to watch and gives me thumbs up and leaves me comments. And I apologize, I haven't had a chance to get to comments lately. I do work full time and so hopefully I'm going to get to those today. But I want to just let you know that if you ever ask me a question and I don't answer it, ask me again. Maybe I missed it. And also if you leave me replies, for some reason YouTube doesn't send those to me. I have to go searching for them. So if I don't answer a reply, it's just because I haven't seen it. So again, if it's something that you need me to answer and I'm not getting to it, don't hesitate to ask me again. Next, grab a mask and give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash. So for this project, I'm using my second favorite ice cubes. My first favorite ice cubes would be my nugget ice from my ice maker. But for this project, I wanted to have a little more control. So I'm using these hexagon cubes and these silicone trays are excellent. If you leave them sitting on the table for like a minute before you try to take them out, they come out a lot easier. I was cruising around on YouTube looking for ice cause I'm like totally obsessed with ice cubes because of ice dyeing. And I found this guy on there and he reviews ice cubes. Like, who, who would have thunk it? Anyways, I learned the tip from him and I wish I could tell you what his name was, but it was a long time ago. But it was genius. Yeah, just let them sit on the table, let them melt a little bit, and they come right out, no problem. Now you want to place the whole thing down inside of a plastic bin and then set it aside and let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. It's been 48 hours since the ice has melted and now it's time for the rinse out. 
You want to start by using cold water and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then gradually increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here I take it to the washing machine and I'm doing something a little bit different now. I'm doing two Synthropol washes. So I put it in a hot water cycle with Synthropol. I do a second hot water cycle with Synthropol. And then I do a third hot water cycle with Millsoft, which brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And then I put it in the dryer and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our tangerine spiral after it's been washed and dried. And tangerine is a really pretty color. There are a lot of colors in this shirt. There's orange, there's red, there's yellow, there's some peachy tones, a little bit of pinky tones. Um, it's really a beautiful color. And just a reminder that all of these single color dyes are going into the playlist that I've named Dharma Swatches. So check that out. I know the single color dyes aren't as exciting as, you know, like a rainbow, but I think it's a very necessary playlist and I'm certainly learning a lot and I hope that you guys are learning a lot with me. And then the splatter guard, it just really makes a good looking spiral and it's quick and it's easy and it's the closest thing to a pleated spiral without actually making a pleated spiral. And then here are some close up shots just showing you all the different colors that came out. And look at the white. The white stayed nice and white with those two Synthropol washes. Um, I also washed this shirt with Pagoda Red um, single dye and the white stayed white. So you be the judge on how you want to do your rinse out, but I think I'm going to be sticking with this from here on out. Um, it only takes just a tiny little bit of Synthropol and I have a, you know, like a gallon jug. So that's what I'm going to do. And then right here at the very end is the liquid swatch up against the ice dye. So that way you can see what liquid looks like and what ice dye looks like. So what do you guys think of tangerine? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and then click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.